You're listening to Deliberate Living, the podcast that inspires, empowers, and encourages listeners to live life more authentically. My name is Holly Priestley, and I'm a nomad, coach, creator, and outdoors woman. And I'm Beers, a vagabond, joy artist, permissionary, and story breaker. We explore different ways people choose to ditch the prescribed life we've all been sold and live on their terms. Finding freedom and happiness however they choose. All right. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Deliberate Living Podcast. I am one of your hosts, Holly Priestley. And I'm your other host, Beers. This week, we have a very special guest. His name is Johnny Nocash. He is a musician doing, what, Death Country or something, and, like, a bunch of other, like, really hard, dark, metal type music. He's actually kind of a softy, though. Um, from Canada, he's living in a van. Um, he's hilarious and a huge character, and I'm really excited to have him on the show because we haven't really had a lot of, like, traveling musicians, traveling uh, performers, really, on the show very much. Um, and we haven't had a lot of international guests and like Canada is our neighbor and they're not that different from us but they are different enough and also his accent is excellent so hello Johnny (laughs) I'm very happy to have you here Uh, very happy to be here I will keep my accent in check no don't more accent (laughs) I could go full on Canadian but I'll try and uh, be audible enough for your listeners to understand (laughs) <laughs> feel free to go full Canadian if you'd like um, <laughs> so for our audience who doesn't know you doesn't follow you um, is not familiar with your work can you give like just a brief uh, little update I guess on uh, how you got to where you are how long you've been doing music um, how you ended up in a van just high level stuff high level stuff uh, yeah I've been playing music for uh, oh, I guess over 20 years now, right? Thanks for magnifying that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, over the 20 years, um, coming up to a year living in a van. Uh, this is my second van within the last uh, 11 months now. Um, I'm in Canada. I'm in beautiful British Columbia. I'm actually on the mainland now. And as far as music is concerned, things are starting to open up. And I, I think I might be able to kind of go back to the old way of doing this hopefully soon as later. Um, so yeah, I, I play acoustic, deaf country, a lot of stuff. Um, but, and the nice thing about that is I can do it from my band. I don't need like a big rehearsal space or um, like a massive studio or anything like that. I can kind of do it all remotely, which is pretty sweet. Could you describe what acoustic death country is? Sure. Um, I'm so intrigued. <laughs> it's uh, really aggressive country music. Country tends to be kind of like reflecting on like personal like loss, and I kind of gravitate towards that. But I'm from a punk rock and a metal background, and I was like, what if we just amp that up? disintegration mode and uh, uh, that's pretty much what it is so um, yeah it's just, hey. yeah it's kind of somber but it, it has the elements and the and the themes and the heart of like country and folk rock okay yeah Malcolm Gladwell did a podcast episode uh, a few years ago about country music and just the amount of heart and storytelling that mm-hmm. is in those songs compared to most other genres of music just don't have that level of, of real heart to them and uh yeah so that's that's fascinating i i am really excited after this call to actually listen to your music because i've not heard any of it yet so uh <laughs> yay i'm gonna be listening along with the audience <laughs> nice. There's a lot of swearing. Just, uh, just <laughs> that's a okay, a okay. Pretty pissed off, but uh, yeah. So that's what I've been doing. Um, I kind of started this style of music when I was down and out um, a number of years back, and I kind of didn't have the resources to play punk rock 
I mean, you need power, you need amplifiers, you need a lot of equipment to be able to execute that style of music. <clears throat> and I only had an acoustic at the time, so I thought, <clears throat> pardon me, um, how can I translate my punk rock and metal kind of um, mentality through the acoustic? And it just kind of happened with fairly organically. So you've been doing music for 20 years and you've been living in your van, second van, for almost a year. What prompted the change from uh, living in a city? You were in Toronto, correct? Um, So you had that kind of like glamorous, I'm sure, city musician. I'm sure it was just like the most glamorous thing ever. Um, And, you know, everything was shiny and rainbows and unicorns and and death country, of course. Um, And then now you're living in a van. What prompted the change? You downsized significantly and you drove to the other side of your giant country mm-hmm. um you know so the, the, i guess the the happy story is that you know i've always been extremely independent uh even from a very young age um, had a single mom um, and i did a lot of hitchhiking when i was a kid um I was on and off the streets, and not necessarily, I don't need to, like, make that sound like a bad thing, or really sure to be that in today. Um, so, yeah, I had always been kind of alone, and I think with the pandemic and lockdown, I'm not sure how things were in the States, but in Toronto especially, we had, we actually had, like, like a severe lockdown, where you weren't even allowed out of your house, or you'd be fine. Um, and I think that kind of... Um, really magnified what I needed to do. I, I was kind of tired of being told what to do. Um, and I got to a breaking point where a lot of my peers and friends were unfortunately succumbing to um, drug addiction and suicide and overdoses. And I was just seeing a lot of my friends and the community falling apart. And I and I was, I was going down that way. I was, I was noticing myself kind of going down this deep spiral, black depression. And, and I knew that I could change that. I just had to take my life in my own hands and not to go, you know, super political, but I was just tired of being told what to do and it's a pocket. I'm going to just do my own thing and you can chase me if you want. Um, but I, I'm, I'm out of here and it, and it really, moment of deciding to, to get out of the city and out of the gridlock, I was instant, instantaneously happy. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I would never I imagine that. that a punk rock musician with a metal death country background would not like being told what to do. That is so uncharacteristic. Big surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what this podcast is all about, is, you know, throwing curveballs at the audience. <laughs> so why van life? If you didn't want to be told what to do, I mean, there's a million other ways you could have gotten, you know, I don't know, actually, if you could have gotten a plane ticket anywhere else because Canada wasn't a very severe lockdown. But uh, why why buy a van? Why that? Um, I, again, I kind of lived on the road even as a, you know, a young adult. I was used to it. I was. It, it didn't. It wasn't a threat to me. Some people mm. would tell me all the time, like it must take a lot of courage, you know, and it, it must. You know, I, I wish I could do that kind of thing. But even at a very young age, I was living a fairly nomadic lifestyle, and and kind of reconnecting with my youth uh, by living in a van, kind of living away from things and then picking up and going whenever I wanted was very attractive to me. It was something that had always come. I mean, as a musician too, I was touring. So tour life is kind of similar in the sense that you're just going from spot to spot and everybody's different. You're meeting new people every day. Uh, there's not really a routine. There's not really a structure or schedule for the, for the most part. So... You know, I, I felt like even though my home was going to be such a small area, I felt like it was a bigger opportunity for life to grow. And it was really, it was like the space that I was living in 
didn't have any boundaries. Like, I didn't look at it in that sense. I didn't look yeah. at it like, oh, I need to upgrade my apartment. I need to get a new condo. I need to get a house now or whatever. I was like, you know, if I, even if I downsize, I think it'll make my world bigger, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I mean, it makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> That's a, 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 a really flipped my life. I mean, I lost a lot of things. Like, I will say, deciding to do this, it was a major sacrifice. In what uh, way? I mean, um, well, I mean, I had a really good job in, in Toronto. I had, I, I, was, I was really intertwined in the music scene there. I had established myself very well. Uh, I had a really good following there. I had friends and my family sent there. You know, like, there are a lot of things like that. Like, mm-hmm. I guess the, the essentials of, 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 of life. Um, were there, and I kind of needed a reset, and I, and I was willing to make that sacrifice. Yeah. So why go to the complete other side of the country? Why not just van around Toronto, where you have friends, where you have connections, where you have family? Why did you book it? <laughs> well, uh, great question, and I actually enjoy talking about this. I think um, I think my I think most people's depression lies in their location um, and I think a lot of people don't realize that you know you can cut people out of your life you can get a new job you can start doing things differently but ultimately your surroundings have so much of an impact and so much of an influence on your well-being and I could have gotten a new job I could have you know, gotten new friends, you know, I could have moved to a different apartment. I, could, I had so many options, and the, the options were there, but I really needed to start over. I mean, I'm still the same person I was back in Toronto, however, I think that um, I, I have a much more bigger appreciation for the short time we have on this planet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I've taken life for granted. I think there was a lot of things that I was overlooking you know and i'm still young enough that i got some fire inside and i don't want to wait until i'm 60 and then it's like oh i guess now's a good time to go camping in my wheelchair you know you know so fuck that shit i'm gonna do it while i can yeah i mean i think that's something that beers and i can both resonate with (laughs) yeah what uh being out in British Columbia, what do you find about the environment that really suits you and nourishes you? Dude, I'm telling you, it was the moment I just left Toronto. Like, I, I think... We, Getting away from the concrete? Well, yeah, and people's drama, and like, and just like, like local events, uh, we're so influenced by what other people tell us. And if you got the damn news on all the time, and if the news is depressing all the time, you're going to be depressed. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And I needed to cut all of that out. So literally, the moment I left Toronto, and I felt the wind, like, blowing against me on that first drive was just like pure freedom, pure, um, I felt like a god. And I don't mean that in like, I I just, I mean that in the sense that I had control of it. I felt like I was free. And and I'll tell you, man, like I've had some rough (laughs) times on the road. (laughs) But it's, it's, I, I would never trade any of the worst nights I've had in band life anything back uh, in my previous life uh, at all. And, and I've always said that to people like that are trying to decide if they wanted to, you know, live a nomadic life. It's like, give it a shot, you know, <laughs> you know, like the lines on your eyes are stories, you know, mm-hmm. and, uh, it's, it's a diary and when you need them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, we all know, we've all been on the road, uh, that living on the road is not always easy. It's not always hashtag van life, hashtag blessed. It is not always pretty. Um, You know, and you just said that, like, you've had some really rough times on the road. Uh, Can you share with us, like, some of the hardest parts about being in a van for you? Um, 
like general, like 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 that other people could relate to, or just or not, like, like yeah, just for for you specifically, issues, like yeah, what issues. are what are some of the hard parts for you specific? Because I know what's hard for me. Like all three of us are gonna have some of the same challenges, right? Like finding places to park. If it's been cloudy for too many days and you can't have your solar, if you don't know where to find fresh water, a shower, bathroom, whatever. Um, but also you have a lot of like unique challenges given that you're a musician, you know, and you have your little recording studio with you all the time, but also that's gotta be challenging. It's not a lot of space to like set up and record. Uh, so yeah, what are your your specific challenges you know, whether they're general or not, like what for you is, is a big challenge. Um, so like for me personally, I really enjoy like taking the fullest sense of the term off the grid living. Like I like to go into the mountains for weeks at a time, completely cut off from society, uh, completely cut. Like I'll, I'll go to town, I'll get a couple weeks worth of, you know, food, water, smokes, booze, you know, all that shit that makes me sick. Um, and I'll just kind of bugger off into the woods for, you know, a, a, an extended period of time. And I like it. I really actually, it, it, again, I was living in a city, so polar opposite. And, and I love nature. I love camping, even from a young age. And I mean, if I'm playing country music, I gotta enjoy the country. So, <laughs> so it's one of those things where um, there are times where I was starting to get a little bit like cabin fever, where especially during the Canadian winters, there was a number of yeah. times I'd wake up and I'd have a foot of snow. Okay, a perfect example of, of one of the hardest things, and this actually happened fairly recently. Um, so I was up on a mountain. Uh, Playing out loud tunes and um, <laughs> cooking hot dogs and just enjoying my life. And it, was, it couldn't have been better. And I woke up the next day to a foot of snow. And I'm on a mountain. Yep. Like, this is not, this is not, this is difficult. This is, a, this is posing now a life or death problem because on, this was a Sunday. And on Monday morning, logging trucks were going to be bailing down that road. And there's only enough room now that there's snow for one vehicle on the road. And they're not stopping. As you know, these logging trucks are so goddamn heavy. So gear down, they're going. And there's no barrier. It's, it, it was a really scary situation. So anyway, I ended up deciding at that very moment that I had to try and get off this mountain. Um, so I started driving through a foot of snow and trees had actually fallen down on the road uh, on my way out, so here I was, cutting down trees, building bridges over these trees to get my van over it, packing in snow, making sure that my van wouldn't bottom out over these trees, and I ended up having to cut three trees down, um, and and building basically these makeshift bridges over top of them, and just hope to God that I wasn't going to get stuck, or that um, I, I a truck was going to come head on with me because that was that was pretty scary shit. I will say. It and is lucky. your van four by four or is it just, uh, <laughs> just front wheel drive and you're doing this? Yeah, yeah. It was, oh wow. my god. Well, and that's the other thing too, viewers, is that like I I I look at the weather every day. And yep. It did say it was going to snow, but I mean, foot like it should, <laughs> you know. Whoever's working the weather channel, I gotta get a gig with them because it's just guessing. You know? Oh yeah, it's nobody enough. knows. <laughs> so yeah, I um, I was expecting you know some flurries, nothing nothing you know to write home about. But when I woke up to almost a foot of snow, like this this was a problem. Um, and I've always said to people that have wanted to live in a van, like, depending on where you, like, a lot of people enjoy being in the city, a lot of people enjoy being on the outskirts, and there's, like, some people that like being in the middle of nowhere, and I just say to everybody, like, just carry the survival fuel that might save your life, like a saw, you know, a hatchet, and, uh, and, you know, whatever else, and and the thing is, is I, I got my van fully loaded for 
off the grid movement. So luckily for me, I had the tools to get out of there. But you know, somebody with a car or maybe a minivan that was living giving it a shot might not have had the same result. So yeah, that's it was wild. Yeah, I remember seeing the pictures on your uh, Instagram stories from that. I was like, my van would not have made it out of there. I would have just been stuck until the snow melted because mine is rear-wheel drive and it does not handle snow at all. Like, it won't stop. It won't start. It won't turn. Like, it has a mind of its own. I've been at a complete stop in the snow and it started moving. From a stop. From a stop. And I was like, this is terrifying. This is not what I want at all. (laughs) And that's something, like, you need to know the capabilities of your rig, but you should know where you're going and, like, what to expect and take things for what you don't expect. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you never know, and I mean, for me, I was like, ah, oh, this is a piece of cake, you know, I, I, I mean, I've lived in some of the harshest winters that it had to offer, so I mean, for me, I was like, oh, this is a piece of cake, but then reality really started kicking in, and I was like, holy shit, this is a big deal, this is, uh, but if I can't, <laughs> if I have to get out of my van to chop down trees, and then I get in my van, and I'm just spinning, I'm fucked. Yep. Like, you know, like, and reality was really starting to, to, to sink in at that point and I was like I, there, there's no if ands or buts about this I, I gotta do this even if it's me winching my van to a tree and just like literally spider manning it out <laughs> before I hit it's the like, road I was living in Colorado where we also get a lot of snow and I got chains for my tires <clears throat> before I left the city because I was like I hope I never have to use these if I have to use these I made a mistake but I have to have them just in case. And I've never used them, but I'm, I've always been glad that I have them. Do you have chains for yours? I don't. Um, again, I was thinking, like, uh, British Columbia is such an incredible uh, place. Like, there's a lot of flat areas, and then there's a lot of extreme mountain areas, right? And... I I really try to avoid just more shit. You know, like, and, and I know that chains are essential, but at the same time, what I usually try and do is I go up when it's good weather, and then I just sit there until I have to get out. Um, and luckily now, uh, we're in basically April. I don't have that to worry about. It's beautiful weather now. Um, but... I mean, I'll be brutally honest with you both. I kind of like putting myself, like, self-sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, I you would. <laughs> I'm my own, like, uh, I'm my own entertainment. So I'm like, <laughs> uh, make, you make your life interesting. I tried. I tried. Yeah. But, it's, it's, but yeah, I kind of self-sabotage myself a little too much. <laughs> But it's it, 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 it it's interesting, you know, and, and I've always had something to to reflect on, and I think that's what you know why I'm starting to like life again is that like every day there's something different, and I try and make the the best of even the shittiest scenarios, and and even if it's a really shitty scenario, I try and figure out a way to laugh at it. Yeah, sometimes it takes some time to get to that laughing point where it's just like, it's too soon, I can't laugh about this yet, but someday this is going to be a good story. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So I, I've learned, I've, I've really grown in that regard of just kind of embracing shit in a good way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think have been some of your biggest... Um, lessons and takeaways in the last year? I mean, you said that as soon as you got on the road, you know, you felt a freedom that you haven't felt before. You felt like a God because you were in control of your own life. Um, what have been some of the biggest things that you've learned in the last well, year? Honestly, I'm telling you, man, <clears throat> uh, that we live in, in we're, we're just so great. We should be great to, to be alive. Mm-hmm. Um, we live in an absolutely stunning, beautiful planet that we're, we're totally overlooking. And mm-hmm. you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. You really don't. You know? um, 
you know, the chances of getting smoked by a bus are pretty high. You know? And uh, I just think, you know, when, when you're stuck in the grid of life for some asshole in his white collar shirt that's basically dictating your entire existence, um, you, you miss out on this incredible opportunity called life. And it really kind of shone a light on what the meaning of happiness is. And I think that really changed everything, like everything. The moment I started camping and the moment I started um, taking time for myself and enjoying the fresh air, even the shitty mosquitoes, you know, <laughs> it was like... Uh, it really, like, it's a big, incredible planet. And it would just, it, it crushes me when I hear people in their 60s and 70s and even 80s, like, saying, you know, I should have taken time while I had the youth, while I had the energy, while I had, you know, the, 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 the wonder. And that is something that I, 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 I almost like spew to people when they're like, oh, you know, I got to stick around because my job. I'm like, fuck your job and fuck your boss. <laughs> fuck your boss. You know, give them the finger, tell them off and, and, and hit the road or go, go somewhere. And they're like, oh, I don't have the money. I'm like, yes, you do. You do. Just blow it. Like, if you're depressed, don't fucking think about tomorrow. Really? Because you don't know if it's going to come. I'm telling you yeah. right now, like, Spend the money if you want. If you're like, oh, I really want to go to, you know, I don't know, Grand Canyon or something, but I can't afford it. Fucking do it. Like I'm yeah. telling you, you're, you're not. Uh, people are just so wrapped up on other people's view of what life should be, and that pisses me off so much that like other people have so much control over our lives and and, and how we look at life. And I'm just, I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm giving them both metal fingers now. And uh, I'm, I'm like punk rock all the way, man. I'm going back to these roots to, you know, how with the system, I start my own. And uh, so it really, and that's, and honestly, and not to like get like super scary and shit. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's, it's, um, I was a very negative person, and the man I'm telling you right now, even though I'm swearing and telling much people off right now, I'm telling the audience, <laughs> I'm actually a really happy person. <laughs> like, you know, like, if your audience is listening, and they're like, wow, this guy's a fifth, um, well, still be it, but I'm, I'm much happier now than I was before. <laughs> I think uh, we're going to see the Johnny No Cash change from you know uh, punk rock metal death country to something like super feel good happy lovey dovey songs in the future and i am excited for that evolution oh he's not I'm denying so it <laughs> uh, no there's no I, I mean i don't i think the the anger is is more of an expression rather than literally being angry. <laughs> it's more of just like, uh, I, I guess I'm just growing up and I, and I realized that I had a great job. I'll tell you, like I could have easily stayed in Toronto. It's a very expensive city. I had a great band. I had great friends and all. And, and I was part of this great community. And it was just like, but why? Like, sure, it sounds good on paper. But I'm not really happy. I was, it was just a re mm. repetition of the same sh good shit, you know. And it's just like, man, this this ain't right. I, mean, I I gotta I gotta see the sunset from different perspectives. I've gotta yeah. see the water. I've gotta feel the you know, the breeze. I've gotta I gotta feel shit like that. Nobody has control of it. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds like if uh, if you're having a rough time in life and you're, you're depressed and you hate your job and you hate your life, spend the money, go do what it is you want to do. Or if your life is fine, 
like it's good on paper, you have the connections, like everything is good, but you just feel like unsatisfied, you feel maybe a little bit bored, you just feel a little unfulfilled, like there's something else out there for you, spend the money, go do the thing you want to do anyway. Like if regardless of what trajectory your life is on, it doesn't have to be like blatantly negative or blatantly, you know, toxic and bad for you to make a change. Like it can be fine. It can be like society's definition of success or whatever but if it's not yours if it's not fulfilling you like it's your fucking life so go yeah, find a way life. to make it your fucking yeah. life yeah it goes down and i've actually had a number of people message me since i hit the road i mean i will say i lost a ton of followers and fans once i started this lifestyle i didn't give a shit i mean at, at first it kind of stung a little bit but now I've been getting messages of people asking for advice because they're in a rut and they're um, and they're feeling like shit and they're like, "What can you help me?" Like, now I'm no life coach, <laughs> <laughs> and I don't ever claim to be because I don't. I would give you the wrong advice, but, uh, <laughs> but it's just neat that people have reached out and said, "Listen, man, I just if you have the time." Could you help me with, you know, I'm thinking of hitting the road. I'm, I'm in a real dark place in life. And uh, it's, it's like, we got to say yes more than no in life. We really mm. do. Um, the more times you say, nah, no, you know, the, the less you learn, the less you explore, the less you, you, you live. And, you know, so if somebody's like, you want to go camping for five days straight, and it's, hell yeah. Let's, let's do it, and, and, and it's it's a mini vacation, and you know I think we're we're just too caught up in in, in the years of life that somebody else created, and we got to start thinking about it. Yeah, I think there's a lot of truth to that. So I am a life coach. Okay, so <laughs> Johnny No Cash, musician and life coach. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Putting that on the resume once we hang up. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> so with with your music, Johnny, I'm I'm really curious if you could share a little bit about how recording and the process mm-hmm. and the tools, yeah. how that transition has worked for you of going from recording stationary to now recording from your van. Yeah, man. And, <laughs> and it sounded like you had a band before, and now it uh, it sounds like you're maybe making music solo? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, it's it's tough. Um, so, I mean, as you know, your, your, your living space is much smaller than when you're in a studio, not even in your house. Um, so I have a really... Pretty simple setup, and you know what? I'll be perfectly honest. I actually really like my setup now because it's very DIY. It makes a lot more sense with my, my brand being Johnny No Cash. It makes no sense to be going into a multi million dollar studio. It just doesn't. And, and we were doing that before. We were going to these huge, beautiful, like, treated studios, and I was looking like, I don't know, man, like, this is not really my vibe. Um, I kind of want it to look like shit and sound like shit. Um, but, and that's how it's sounding now. <laughs> <laughs> so by taking the cash out of it, you really just got a more authentic Johnny No Cash version of your of your songs. It's just so deliberate and authentic now. <laughs> well, that's just it. It's, uh, I, I like working with the tools I have. I, I really, which are very... Minimal. So, um, to answer your question, um, I have my laptop and I've got just a small condenser mic, and it's a really tight space. Like, I'm actually in my friend's place right now, but um, it's only about six, no, not even, I think it's five by five. Um, so, my guitar is really awkward to play, and I, I record my guitar first. And the thing is, it's like once I set up, I ain't eating food. Like, there's just not enough room. Mm. Right? Like, it is, 
I need to have breakfast. I need to get all my stuff out of the way before I even set my, my gear up because then I'm, I'm, I'm stuck there for the day. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I can. So I set it all up and I kind of do my, my best to bang it out as best as I can. And it's just literally one mic on my guitar, one mic um, plugged in. Uh, so I DI it in, into the, the interface, and that's it. And then. And then I record my vocals separately. So, and it's cool. Like, I, I will say the nice thing about going to a studio is you have a producer to tell you it's good. It's good. We're, we're moving on. Because you I get can, that affirmation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm such a critic of my work that I could literally sit there for days. Over and over and over again. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's like, fuck, that take two days ago was better, but I erased it, so I'll try and do that again. And it's like, ah, uh, it's just a, it's the spinning board. Um, <laughs> and and it's, it's been tough. I mean, and that's the other thing too, is I have a huge voice. And I, there's no way I can record in the city. I have to go into the mountains. I have to go off the grid. I have to go to extremely isolated spots. Otherwise, it will sound like somebody's being murdered. And um, <laughs> I don't want the cops to be showing up. For that <laughs> Put the death in death country. That's right. That's right. So it, 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 it is very difficult, and but it's fun, you know. I'm again. I, I work on my own schedule as far as that's concerned, and um, I will say, though, because you, you mentioned about the band, that I do still work very closely with the members in the band. So um, my guitarist is still mixing the music. As, um, uh, so it's really cool that we still have that. Yeah. So what about the brand uh, of, of Johnny No Cash? Mm-hmm. But where, where did that come from? <laughs> and what's it mean to you? Um, well, you know, well before then, uh, <laughs> I had had some years where um you know i spent some time on the streets and shit and um there's no money when you live on the streets i just kind of lived in this my entire life i i hated money i i hated the the how people looked up money and and that that was a goal you know that money was more important than friendship uh money was more important than family and love and I just thought it was such a poisonous fucking thing. It, 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 and I just... So even before I came up with the name Johnny No Cash, um, I, I still represented that lifestyle. Like, um, I still represented that, 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 that mental kind of way of living. Um, when, when I came you know, up with the idea, and, and it just kind of... It, it was like two puzzle pieces that just kind of found each other and clicked it. Clicked, it was like, you know, playing acoustic. I don't need power now. You know, I can do it anywhere. You know, I, I don't rely on material things in the sense of, you know, power or, um, you know, electronics and things like that. I was able to take this anywhere. Um, and then coming, and then of course, being a fan of what Johnny Cash stood for, the man in black, you know, he's standing up for all the underdogs in life. I was, I, it just it just made so much sense uh, to be doing what I was doing, and it wasn't really intentional. It was really um, organic. It really happened. And, yeah, and I and, and and I still stand by it. I mean, sure, you need money to you know do certain things, and I totally get that. But I still loathe money just as much as I did before. So yeah, it's it's just. My way of thinking, and it sucks because there's a lot of people that are like, you know, how are you doing financially? And it's like, shut. What the fuck? What, what does that even matter to you? Like, what, what, is that going to affect you? Or is I mean, obviously, happen? it matters to them how they're doing financially. So they're like, how the fuck is this guy surviving if he is so detached from capitalist society? If he is so off grid? If he's like, I think for a lot of people, I mean, I got those questions. I get those questions all the time because I also live my own way doing my own thing and it's 
I think these people are just coming from like a, a place of genuine like confusion. <laughs> like how can you not be more preoccupied with cash, with money? Like how can you not be more uh, integrated into capitalist society? Like I think it's a little bit like disbelief and they're kind of like, how the fuck? You know, like how you're actually doing financially doesn't affect them. And that's not really what they're asking, right? When they ask those questions, yeah. most often they're asking like, the fuck? <laughs> right. Which is more of a personal thing. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 found, I had a Q&A last week and people were asking like about like, actually, I don't know about you guys. I, I, I don't, this is a question for you guys. Actually. Do you guys get a lot of like, really personal questions coming down the pipe like about <laughs> sex and shit and it's like wait a second who the fuck are you a <laughs> why are you, why do you care like why do people care so much i got more questions about that shit and i'm just i'm blown away by people's curiosity and i mean i'm not blaming anybody for being curious but it's like why is that like why aren't you more curious about hey man like, uh, what are you, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I think for me, I don't necessarily, I do get questions that are like way too personal and like have like, where the fuck did that come from? The thing that irritates me the most, uh, is when I post a picture and I, I put a caption underneath it on Instagram. Cause that's, I'm a writer. I use words. I like words. Words are great. Um, and then people will come in and be like, you're so pretty. And I'm like, read what I said. This has nothing to do with anything that I said. And I get like kind of upset. And I'm like, why? Like, I, why comment on how I look? Please don't. Like, that's not the point of this post. Like, if you could read the words, I put work into that. Like, that's always like a little bit more irritating to me. But I do get people asking all the time about like, way personal stuff. And like, depending on who it is, and like, if they're a complete stranger or not, or if they're like, seriously, if they're a man or a woman, it's like, <laughs> men, y'all are just wild sometimes. And you say a lot of things and you ask a lot of things that you really have no business saying or asking. Like, I don't owe you shit. Like, not you guys. You guys are great. I like you guys. You guys are awesome. But like, the strangers on the internet, like... They're just so, so wild. It's like having that barrier um, of social media, of the internet, of like, I don't actually know this person, but the way that we share, we share publicly. I don't have a private profile. I do that on purpose. We talked about it in, a, in an episode of the podcast about um, social media consumption. Um, and like having a public persona and having, you know, the internet be what it is seems to give people a lot of permission to go there in ways that they wouldn't just go there if you like met them at a bar or the grocery store or something. Hundred percent. And Beers, is that is, is, is this your home right here? <laughs> <laughs> this this is my Jeep that I have semi lived out of for the last year ish. Kind of doing a lot of short term rentals, kind of all over the country. But I have just signed a one year lease on nice. a place in the mountains outside of Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm really excited about it. The really the only downside is that my internet there is only available via satellite, which creates which is a little spotty in the first place, but then it also creates a lot of lag and delay in any type of conversation or even phone call because there's no cell service. So any cell service is actually piggybacking off the Wi-Fi. So it creates these these long delays. And so today I am continuing the process of trying to figure out how and where to record this podcast because <laughs> it's not working from this new home I just moved to. Uh, uh, to the town? Like, are you in, uh, it looks like you're in, like, a, a little bit Yeah, I drove half an hour into a town where I've got better cell service, and I'm parked at a park, uh, yeah. where I was able to record successfully before, uh, but there was rain when I got here, and since, the, the sun has really come out. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, yeah, that's... 
that's what oh, I'm in at the moment. Gotcha. I, well, congrats on the home. Or on the new Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's thanks. The, um, as far as people asking personal questions, I do get some personal questions, but I also have tended to share very, very openly about, uh, about a wide range of things. Uh, sex life included and recently I have uh, I have pulled back quite a bit on that but I, I don't know that I've gotten maybe the same level of questions simply because I just have thrown everything out there. Uh, <laughs> What's left to ask everything. if you've shared everything already right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good way of looking at it actually yeah, it's kind of like beating them to the punch. But that's the thing, it's like, I find that maybe people doing this lifestyle, people are curious. And, um, yeah. You know, and I, and I do understand the curiosity, and, and that's only natural, right? The curious beings. Um, but that is a good angle, um, especially if you were going through some shit that. Uh, could be detrimental, like that the information could be in somebody else's hands, and you just decided, you know what, I'm going to take the, the control back and, and just talk about it freely. So if somebody else decides to talk about the same subject, they can hear it from you rather than a third party. Right. And it also allowed, what well, you, you talked about how stepping into taking control of the, your environment and how you're, you're living your life, how you felt so empowered uh, and people have been reaching out to you to ask you, okay, uh, I'm stuck. Well, what advice do you have? Uh, I very much found that by sharing about a lot of things that people just don't tend to talk about, it opened up a lot of doors for people to say, wow, I've never talked to anybody about this before, and I need to. And by it, I, that wasn't even initially part of my reason for, for doing it. It was, it was more of kind of taking control of, uh, of damage other people might do to me, but it ended up uh, being being something that other people found really helpful. And yeah, just just like you, like like living your authentic life and choosing to do it the way it feels right to you. Yeah, it, it inspires people. And it gives people the a little bit more of the nudge that, hey, I don't have to do things the way they're supposed to be done. Yeah, I mean, there's options, which is the coolest thing in life, is that there are options. And so many people think, no, I got it, I got to do this, and it's like, no, we don't. You know, sure, it's terrifying. It's terrifying doing new things. It's terrifying taking the loop. You know, it's just like when you're going foot jumping. It's like it's easy to go off the first dive and board. Well, the second one's a little harder. You're not going to die. You're not going to die. You know, it's a little scarier than the third one. It's like, you're not going to die. <laughs> but it's scary. But I might. But I might. <laughs> but if yeah. you see somebody else do it first, then you're like, okay, well, they didn't die. So I'm probably right. not exactly. going to die. If they also didn't die, and the more people you see doing it, the more you're like, okay, cool. All these people, all these other people are doing it. So maybe I can do it. And I think, I mean, that's, that is the entire point of this podcast. That is the entire point of my personal channel, um, you know, on, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Facebook, everywhere is to bring more light to more ways to live life and all the ways people are choosing to do it and like share more of their stories so that you can see that there are options. And I think that you guys are also doing a really great job of sharing all the options. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, like I said, I've never been happier. I've never I've met more interesting people uh, that share the same kind of views I do. And even if we don't 
share the same views, at least there's some common ground in the, in the sense of like, you know, you guys want to do something different with your short period. You know? And, you know, I, I mean, the other thing too is like, you know, when you, I was living in the city, I was seeing so much division happening. Like, some of the people were kind of like fighting ads, and everyone's opinions mattered more than others. Like, it was like, fuck, man. Like, and then once I got out on the road, um, all that seemed to go away. You know, it, it just, it didn't. I mean, the only exposure I saw of this is when I came on the television. And yeah. it was like, ah, fuck, I'm not <laughs> like, involving myself in that toxicity anymore. Um, and even some of my closest friends, like, we'll have the most in depth conversations about, like, what's going on in the world. And then when I went back to Ontario to visit them, first thing, they were watching the news. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's, like a drug. it's like a drug. It's like, oh, I, I, I gotta figure out, you know, is there a new lockdown? And they said, shut the fucking thing off, crack a beer and smoke a smoke with me, man. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I mean, I, yeah, I got a short life. Kind of, but, uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's been great, and and I'm I'm stoked to start traveling more now that the uh, like the weather's getting a lot better. And actually, today I'm bringing white lightning. That's what I decided to call it. My <laughs> day. Nice. I'm I'm bringing white lightning for a tune up today because I'm going to be heading into the mountains next week. Nice. For a couple of weeks, and then, um, because my actually the friend that I'm, st- I'm at right now who bought some property in the middle of nowhere. Nice. So, yeah, we're gonna explore the property. I'm gonna help him uh, clean up some of the brush, and we're just gonna get off the bed for a while. Dude, that sounds awesome. That sounds like a really, really good opportunity and a, a good way to spend a couple of weeks <laughs> as the weather's getting nicer. That's amazing. Yeah, I, I, the Fraser Valley is uh, the Fraser River, which is great for gold. We're going to get some gold, you know, um, have some bonfires. It's just going to be great. Fuck yeah. So where can people find you online to see your adventures in White Lightning? Uh, to see you pan for gold, <clears throat> where can people find your music? Uh, how can people can follow up with you if they don't know who you are already? Yeah, I mean, so music-wise, I mean, on all streaming platforms, um, uh, you can just search John No Cash uh, for my solo stuff, and then John No Cash and the Talk of Outlaws for like really pissed off shit. Um, that was with the band back in the day, or back in Toronto. And uh, Johnny No Cash official for the um, for Instagram. I've actually been taking a really long break from Instagram, and it's been very healthy. It's been good, like not being on it every day, or not posting every day, or not following up on like, oh, did this post keep getting left? And um, so I've been kind of getting off that a little bit. Uh, not to say don't follow me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that's Instagram, and if you want to check out my podcast, it's called um, Life with Johnny No Cash, and that is on most streaming platforms as well. Awesome, excellent. Sweet. Thank you so much for being a part of our show. I've been wanting to have you on for weeks, and you know, just aligning all of our schedules has been a joy. But we made it happen, <laughs> and I'm so glad yeah, that we it's did. It's great to meet you. It's great to talk. Me too, man. I'm, I'm, I, I had no idea what you looked like. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I, I've listened to the podcast a number of times, and I was like, who is he talking about? Um, but, uh, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really happy to meet you too. And um, if I bomb down to the States, uh, we'll, we'll have to and uh, catch up in real time. Yeah. That'd be awesome. And thank you to everybody who is listening to this episode um, or any of the episodes prior. Thank you so much for being here. Do all of the things that I always tell you to do. Like, subscribe, five stars, thumbs up, reviews, all the things that helps us get seen by other people. If you know someone who is maybe a musician or who is looking to be on the road, 
um, or any of that, send this episode to them so that they can learn a little bit more about what that looks like. And uh, I hope you guys tune in next week for another excellent episode. Bye.